Hey guys, Steven here with another wonderful logic gate tutorial for you. Uh, this is going to be a very, very simple one, but really, really cool. I just figured out something awesome that I want to show you guys, and that is, um, we saw in the last video how we can turn a binary number into a decimal number, which is great for interpreting your answers. However, the question that people have asked me before is, well, how do I take uh, a certain number of decimal inputs and use them to create binary inputs that I can manipulate with my circuit. So I'm gonna show you how to do that and then we're going to uh, actually do a really cool example where we're gonna make a game out of this. So let's start off with uh, three inputs. And you can do this with any amount, but, uh, or sorry, not three inputs, eight inputs. You can do this with any amount, but it's easiest in uh, powers of two. So like one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, so on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now I'm not gonna label every single one of these, but I'll label the top and bottom so you know uh, what each one is. So this will be zero, and the bottom one is going to be seven because we're counting from zero to seven. Seven. Okay, so what we wanna do is uh, basically make it so that when this button is clicked, our binary answer is zero, and this one's clicked, our binary answer is one, and so on down to seven. And the way we're gonna do this is with OR gates. And specifically, we're going to use the four input OR gate that I thought I would never need. But it turns out it's actually pretty useful when you're doing something like this. Now, if you're using a larger number than eight for your number of inputs, you're gonna need a bigger OR gate. So what you can do is take uh, two of these guys and actually just OR them together like this. But I'm not gonna bother with that mostly just because of how long it takes to do the video. So what we're gonna do is just go through each number individually and wire them all up. So for zero, we don't actually have to hook it up to anything. By the way, our binary number up here, or is going to be up here, and sorry, I should make some LEDs so we know what we're looking at here. Uh, it'll just be red from uh, right to left, like all of our other binary numbers have been, where the leftmost is the uh, highest digit, and the rightmost is the lowest digit. So zero, we don't have to wire up at all because binary for zero is zero. So let's look at one. Uh, one is very simply just wired up to this. So if we click the one, we see it becomes one for binary. And the first couple are gonna be pretty simple. The next one is two, and two we just have to hook up to the second number right here. So we can see now it's on two. Uh, three is going to be uh, the first one and also the second one. And let's keep our lines neat by dragging them down like this. So we can see that when we click the three, and uh, I guess I should probably do a number like halfway down so you know what we're looking at here. But basically the principle here is every odd number will have the first one lit and every even number will have the second one lit at least. But as numbers get bigger, you're gonna have to add in the others. So along those same lines, four is only going to be lit on this one here. And it's, it's even, so the first one isn't lit, okay? So then if we look at five, we know we have to have the first one lit because it's an odd number. And then we're actually going to have the four lit just because that's, you know, binary for five, of course. So six, six is an even number, so we're not using the first one. So we're gonna use the, uh, the four digit and the two digit to make six. And we'll again, drag our line down to make it look pretty. And then seven is going to be all three because it's odd and it's a relatively large number for what we're working with here. And as you can see, we now have, oops, there, oh, almost, almost, there we go. Look how clean that is. So now we have our uh, decimal to binary converter. So if we click seven, we get seven, we click zero, it's still zero. One gives us one, two is two, three, four, five, six, seven. The thing with this is you have to make sure that no two outputs are on at the same time or else you're gonna get both numbers added together. So that'll be kind of confusing. So it's up to you as the designer to make sure that that never happens, okay? So let's look at something cool we can do with this. Um, basically what I wanna do is we're gonna make a game. We're gonna make a rock, paper, scissors, which is something I showed in another video, but we're gonna do it at uh, a more abstract level using uh, the logic gates. So, I'm going to put up a truth table that shows you the uh, 
the values, I guess, are actually, you know what I'll do is I'll cut the video and we'll build the truth table together, okay? So, okay, so we're in MS Paint, and what we're going to do is create a truth table for um, two people playing rock, paper, scissors, and what uh, the, I guess, possible inputs and outputs of our, of our system can be. So let me just quickly uh, draw an actual table here. Boy, holding shift doesn't actually make it straight lines. That stinks, okay. So we'll have um, two players. We'll call one player X and the other player Y. Uh, player X is going to have two, um, well, let's look at what we have. We have rock, paper, and scissors are the three possible uh, moves that you can make, which means that we need to have enough binary digits for our circuits to represent uh, all of these. So we're gonna need two digits and our possible values we can use are 0, 0, 0 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And this is true whenever you're designing circuits and you have a number of things you have to represent, you have to figure out how many bits it takes. Now we're not gonna use the 1, 1 because it can be done in three bits. We don't need all four. So we'll just never use the 1, 1 case, okay? So let's take a look and figure out what it takes for each player to win. So unfortunately what we have to do is draw out every single possible combination of who can win and under what circumstances. So I'm gonna quickly populate our list of the truth table just by counting up in binary and I'll resume the video after that. All right, so I just popped into Excel and uh, made a nice little table of all of our possible inputs and we're going to create the outputs. Uh, we're not gonna do all these because it's really, really simple to do and I trust that uh, all of you can figure it out. So pretty much uh, I'm gonna do a couple examples and I'm gonna get the whole thing done and load it back up. Basically the idea is we, uh, we look at X and Y as separate inputs and WX and WY are the outputs where WX means X wins and WY means uh, Y wins. And WX and WY can never both be true because X and Y can never both win. You can have a, uh, a one in one column means uh, that player wins a zero in that column means they either lose or they had a, uh, a draw. So that's the system that we're using. Um, <clears throat> now what you can go ahead and do right off is anytime both players uh, play the same thing, you have a draw for both players. So in our first example, zero, zero versus zero, zero, both players threw rock. And don't forget we have our uh, table over here that shows what each thing corresponds to. And then if we look at the bottom, both players are playing 1-1. One, one. Well, 1-1 one, one we didn't say is equal to rock, paper, or scissors. That's just an invalid answer. So if both players or either player throw something invalid, then they both automatically will draw. So if we look at uh, X here in the second to last column, X threw an invalid. So we'll give them a draw. We'll give the benefit of the doubt to X. That's just how I'm doing it. Now you're more than welcome to uh, make that a loss and give Y a win, but for this example, I didn't. Uh, so anytime you see a one, one, you can draw a zero. Now let's look at a victory condition. Uh, in this number, so midterm number one, this guy right here, we have uh, rock versus scissors. So of course X is going to win. So we have X of one under midterm one, row one, okay. And then similarly, if we look at the next row down, we have uh, X is rock versus Y is paper. So of course Y is going to win that round, okay? So this is how you populate this list. You just figure out who wins under what conditions and then uh, populate your table. And then we'll have, when we're done, an equation for WX and an equation for WY. So I'm gonna cut and fill up the table really neatly so you can look at it and then we'll look at uh, how we okay, create guys, we're back. got the equations done. As you can see, uh, there are three times that each player could win. Uh, so WX and WY both have uh, three victory conditions, I call them, in which that player could win. So all we have to do is construct equations for these and then we'll have a circuit that we can use to attach to our binary encoder so that if the player pushes the, the rock button, this is my rock, then uh, the, the zero zero will come out. And then if the player pushes the paper button, that's a pretty good piece of paper, then uh, paper will come out. And if they push scissors button, oh, slightly more challenging doodle, okay, then uh, the scissors code will come out. That's our goal. So let's look at each of these uh, one by one. So for WX, 
we're gonna have, um, well, when is WX true? It's true here, here, and here. So I'm gonna tell you, we're gonna look at the min terms for these, and I've done a video on this before. Min term is basically um, a series of uh, variables, which are called literals, and each literal is either uh, itself, like x, or not itself, not x. And by, by using these, we can convert from literals to numbers. But basically, the first row is equivalent to the number zero, and our last row is gonna be equivalent to uh, the number 15. So we have uh, min term number one, I'm gonna call that M1, plus zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, M6, plus M8, which is the next one down. And the easy way to tell these is look at the binary inputs here. For M8, it's one, zero, zero, zero. We know that's equal to eight. For this one, it was zero, 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 one. We know that's equal to one. And then WY is equal to uh, zero, one, two. Oh, let me just mark where they are. Okay, so we have M2 plus zero, one, two, three, M4 plus M9. Okay, so all the others are draw conditions. So both players will have uh, zero for their their win loss condition. Okay, guys, we are back in Cedar. I have two of our uh, encoders right here, but we're only using three inputs, so we only need two bits for the output. I have it so set up so that we have rock paper and scissors labeled, and uh, these are the binaries where rock is uh, gonna be zero, zero, scissors is gonna be zero, one, and paper is gonna be one, zero. So then I labeled our variables next to this for uh, which one really corresponds to which. <clears throat> if you look at, actually, let's pull these onto these lines. So it'll be, the top one will be the one and the bottom will be the zero. And you'll see why this is important in a minute. So what we can actually do is <clears throat> we can use our decoder from the last episode to build our functions that we just made it in paint. And uh, so keep in mind though, the way I've done these uh, decoders for the OR gates, you'll need to make sure that the second input is always zero by using this little ground. It's an electricity symbol. That means you tie it to a ground. And uh, that's just something this simulator makes you do for some reason. Uh, anyways, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Mux and Decoder, menu five, and we're gonna pull the four to 16 decoder. And what this guy does is it takes four binary inputs and spits out 16 outputs, depending on your binary code that you put in. And what we can do is manipulate these outputs to give us our answers as far as who wins which round. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie in uh, the top one to be X1. And I'm gonna try to keep these lines clean. The next one down will be x0, and again with the, the lines, then uh, y1, and finally y0, okay? And uh, this is just going to, these will be our inputs, and then the outputs will come out. So you can see right now we have rock versus rock. We have no output. Let's um, hook up, uh, well, we just did our, our min terms and our equations. And we can actually do kind of a shortcut here where if you look at this, it's labeled zero through 15. Zero stands for min term zero. And 15 stands for min term 15. So what we can do is or together the outputs in order to create whichever condition we want. So we're gonna need two three input or gates, one for each uh, outcome. So let's try this. Let's do X first. We used, uh, X will be our top one. We used M1. M6, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I believe is this one. And then, yeah, one, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, and then M8, which is 2 up from there, that made X. And then Y was M2. And notice we never used the same one twice. So we had M2, uh, 0, 1, 2, M4. I'm trying to separate these lines for you. And M9 which is this one. And the top ones we don't use at all. So you can see where these lines are separated, okay? 
So if our top guy is lit, it means that x1, because we just built our equation that we made before. And you can see we didn't really need to do all that algebra, but it's a nice little proof. Okay, so right now, it looks like everything is the way it should be. So let's give it a test. Let's do x plays scissors and y plays paper. X wins! Okay, what if y plays rock and x plays scissors? Ah, y wins! It's exactly what we expect. Let's say both players play scissors. Nobody wins. And up here I have nice little uh, binary code for what you put in in case you forget which one of these corresponds to which. And these lines could probably be drawn better, like so. Uh, let's try... Um, both players play something invalid. They both play uh, paper and scissors. Nobody wins. Or one player plays paper and scissors. Nobody wins, because this is an invalid combination. So, this is everything that we expected to see using this nice little decoder chip that we saw how to make in the last video, except we were using a, uh, a smaller version. But this is just pretty much two of those uh, stacked together. Or maybe it's three. I think it's just two. I forget. It's not really important. We're going to go into how to make one another time, but this is a cool little application of it. So I hope you guys understood this and that you see some of the awesome applications of logic gates in your everyday lives if you play rock, paper, scissors in your everyday life. <laughs> Although I can't say that all of you do. So give this game a try. It's really simple. Or come up with your own game and come up with your own equations. Then you can use a decoder like this one to, uh, to build it. So thanks for watching and good luck.